Welcome everyone, Costine here with a look at the Total War Saga Troy and how to play it. Is it worth playing? Well, there are some really great ideas that actually have formed the basis for quite a lot of things that Creative Assembly did in Warhammer 3. So you have the supporter system that Kislev uses, it was created for this game. You have the Warband upgrade system, it was created for this game. You have other things as well in this particular title that made their way in Warhammer 3. So this game may end up being one of the most influential games in Total War history, at least in terms of the idea. The economy system that the cast dwarves, especially being the big ticket one. And probably going forward in Total War games, we're going to see a repeat of this because it is a good system. But how to play Troy? It does certainly have a lot of issues. Well, for this, uh, this situation, is. I've chosen the easiest campaign in the game, and that is Sarpedon. Sarpedon has an enormous amount of potential. He starts with the tier 3 capital with a tier 2 minor settlement that can produce stone. But first off, there is a battle. There's always going to be a battle that you're going to face early on in the campaign. A, an army that's just been put out there for you to destroy. Maybe you get an idea for the gameplay of battles. But I am going to ignore this army. And sometimes in quite a few campaigns, ignoring this initial army th that you're given may be the best possible choice. It is an army under Rhodes. And Rhodes is going to be wiped out by Memnon over here. So... First things first that I am going to do is, since the economy is so I important and the way the resources work, you can King trade Sop. them, I am going to go to Hector, forget Paris, screw and Paris, first. and declare war on we shall talk. Um, Markaria. Oh, Makaria, sorry. You're just strangling with some of these names. With Against Makaria. And this is going to give me a significant number of resources. So what I'm going to do is take all of his gold quite and all of his food and as much of the wood as possible that will do Time. then i am going to go to dardania and do the same against their initial Invent. enemy and again take all of his food isn't really going to be a problem for the ai because they will easily recover from that gold because i do want that juicy gold you will understand in just a moment why and yeah then max out max out the lumber even okay and just to uh, declare war on factions that would be wiped out anyway and my goal over here there is a nice corner here with two factions that are at war with each other you could decide to support one or another but since i start with the tier 3 capital one of the things i can do through the instant construction system that you have you have to spend gold for it is i can get a tier 2 barracks that is substantial and i also want to get access to heavy anatolian skirmisher because they do have a decent amount of armor and they're pretty easy to get and now I am going to recruit myself some tier 3 units, but I don't quite have the food. I'm also going to get rid of the centaur building. When it comes to myth units, the way myth units are recruited is you get a structure that increases their capacity. Centaurs have a lot of capacity, but they're kind of, well, they are pretty bad. I do need more food, so where would I get it? Well, let's see who has a lot of food at the moment. Only these fellows, and they actually do have, Your dealings um, well, Memnon has a lot of food. I could also go to Troy, the I Eternal City. To King now, I words. want food, so I'm going to trade t Troy some of that juicy lumber that I picked up by trading with Aeneas, Hector, all that and Lord in turn an recruit uh, recruit a unit of eastern spearmen with two units of of um heavy axe warriors and i'll also recruit another hero now when it comes to recruiting another army I'll talk about the units in just a moment. When it comes to recruiting another army, you have a loyalty system similar to the Vampire Coast, actually, in Warhammer 3. Yes, they took that system and implemented it here, where you have various actions that can earn you motivation. Now, lo lords won't rebel. Heroes won't rebel. 
but their motivation does have an impact because higher motivation benefits, lower motivation downsides for the army, for the province they're in. But you also have Homeric uh, characters. Now, generally, I would not recruit this one because maintaining motivation, like, Fighting a weaker army, probably not going to happen all that much. Though, there isn't necessarily too um, too many issues over here. So, let's get the defender. And I'm also going to construct some buildings. Now, in terms of unit recruitment, the units I recruited, the, uh, the reason I rushed for these heavy axe warriors, they have a decent amount of armor, 65 armor. They have a shield. Uh, they have a shield. Same with the spearmen. Though, the spearmen are not as good as these fellows are. A day I will get a significant amount of resources after turn one, but since I want to get uh, off the ground and I want to wipe these two factions out over here to gain their territory, you want to get their resources. In this case, I'd be gaining wood, food, and more food if I decide to keep this particular settlement, which I probably won't do so. Um, so you want heavily armored units because they, they do better in b both battles and in Atrasov. The crucial thing about heavily armored units is they take less damage in battles. It's not just a question of Atrasov, though obviously it helps with that as well. If you can get yourself some heavy units, that's a great thing. Now in terms of, res uh, in terms of buildings. Um, so main settlement buildings, the way they work in this game is they're mainly for unit recruitment and worshipping the gods, basically. Like, you can get various benefits, resource benefits, but they don't produce resources. Or they uh, only may only produce like things like from special buildings, like ship stands, food, for instance. So your the resources you produce are from the minor settlement buildings. Now, the way the minor settlements work, it, w when it comes to resource uh, buildings, there's five different resource buildings. The first one, if you have a high influence, which can be represented here, you will generate more resources. Since I have high influence, that's what I'm going to build. The second one costs influence, but give you, it gives you some other benefit. In this case, stone gives you a construction time reduction. The third one increases all resources generated in the entire province and faction-wide uh, resource benefit at tier 3. The fourth one is a more expensive version of the first one, far more expensive, but generates quite a bit more resources, double the resources, but it is significantly more expensive, like double the cost, more than that when you're counting the significant amount of gold that you might spend in that. And the fifth one is cheap, but it does have the significant downside of growth. So in this case, I'm just gonna go for the two of them because I do want to maintain growth. But if I need a particular resource, the final one is relatively cheap. Then you have research. When it comes to research, every lord will start, every hero will start with some kind of resource unlocked. In the case of Sarpedon, he starts with gold. So he gets a trickle of gold every single turn and he starts with bronze. Pretty solid. If he starts with gold and stone, that would be the best in the world. But at this point, I'm just going to switch him to gold and wood because I don't have wood early on. Now, what makes Sarpedon so powerful and this is the important thing is he has a gold mine just very close to him to the west in fact i could rush for that gold mine very quickly in this campaign if i so desire but that would actually mean going to like war against two factions i may want to declare war on this faction regardless because if i do it right now i can avoid a war later on because they'll ally someone else but that's not necessarily a priority and by the time i arrive there I will have enough of an army to wipe them out. And the reason I'm recruiting a second lord is helping me out in Atrazov. And that's the first turn. Um, I'm just going to press escape, come on. <laughs> I forgot to do something that was important, and, now, and then I pressed the wrong thing. Okay, so I guess I'm just going to wait. Okay, there we go. And just turn off all of these things. You have to do it every single time you start a campaign. It's not really an issue in Warhammer 3 because while the camera settings still are by default, the only one you see when you when you just press fast forward once is the Demon Prince and that is it. Okay, so as you can see, they've abandoned Telos uh, and they have a barracks there. So, I am going to go to this faction over here they're at war with. And this like is the key thing. People. You want to take advantage of this kind of decision making. I could get their gold, but I want their wood. 
and let's go with a, a decent amount or I could just give them some stone because I do have plenty and get the food because that's something I am going to need okay and we are officially at war not necessarily the best possible outcome but it will do And yes, I did lose some Anatolian youths and all that. Take the city as well. Son of Zeus himself. And now I get a barracks here from which I can recruit the tier 1 units I probably should have been using from the start. And now I can recruit more of these fellows. That's a key thing here. Constant recruitment. Over here, I am going to build the temple of Aphrodite. Why Aphrodite? How do the gods work? Well, you need to increase favor with the god uh the way uh, or increase devotion as it's called the way you do it is you can either do a hecatomb ritual ritual or you can pray to that particular god that will give you some um some devotion but really the main way you I get devotion you is for temples they also unlock the agents the priestesses now the priestesses from my I perspective aren't really cross. that strong or that worth it but absolutely can uh play a role now, over here, I am, sure I am going to get the military access wrong. agreement with, uh, with, uh, um, with him and also get some food and bronze. Okay. And then we're going to do... Then I'm going to do a barter agreement of, let's say, 600. Well, that's a bit much. Um... Okay, and since I have a decent amount of stone, we can trade some of that stone. Not going to be enough, and that will do it. It isn't ideal to trade wood like this, but within the context that I'm operating, I need food more than I I'm need sure. anything else Somewhat. at the moment. And besides, I can always fleece uh, Dardania for some of it back, no problem by getting a military alliance so that only works on a temporary level and i'm going to get this to tier two in order to get access to um okay now sarpedon has a unique mechanic where he can spend gold to get precious resources and then he can spend those precious resources in order to get various benefits over here for instance i want the influence benefit from um the minoan relic so in order to do that, we need to ask various factions for those. Especially Rhodes, because, yeah, they're kind of going to get wiped out very quickly by Memnon over here. <laughs> Even though I am at war with Rhodes, funnily enough. Regroup. Duty first. We're on the move. Law of an ancient land. I admit this wasn't really ideal, but because uh, it interrupted my unit recruitment, but I'll make do. They will serve as slaves. Making my mark. March without rest. That's clear enough. The priest shall wield the knife. We can take them. Your path to victory. We deserve to win. Now, motivation can be gained for battle for the motivation effects uh, directly. Just a bit of an unfortunate effect. That's fine, because they took some damage and they'll be within easy sight. Or not. A true ally. Sheesh. Make this place secure. 
Okay, in this case I am just going to be forced to spend some of that precious gold in order to get the barracks up and uh, get those units up again. And now I got the cult of Aphrodite. And we are going to get some heavy skirmishers and more bronze units. The only units that you have, this is the thing, you might need to spend... I'm sure we will both come out of this better off. And you can see how much ridiculous amounts of food they I may get over here. So I need that food for myself. I'll prove myself. Mistakes were made. This the positioning that I put them in should have considered that the I army am. was going to move over there. Me? That is a mistake. I have Okay. And let's ask more relics from Rhodes before they get wiped out, because they have the Minoan relics that we want. There we go. I do want that influence bonus, so I just need one more set, and that will be it for the moment. But I do want to keep asking Rhodes for them, I see uh, as long as they're alive. I've heard King Sarpedon has some odd ideas. All right. And let's get a barter agreement. Sure. That'll help keep me afloat, so to speak. And now both these guys are recruiting. And we can also increase the cult level because we have the resources. Now I start in Arun province and one of the issues that you're going to encounter a lot in Troy is that because of the starting positions, the provinces tend to be split a lot of the time. Uh, over here I am going to pick up this defender and I send him on a mission to recolonize that particular territory. I keep my promises. We shall prevail. All right, there's plenty of harpies over here. I've got what it takes. Keep together. Make them pay. Hit the road. All right, I have two turns. Now, obviously, it would be this much better if I fought these battles ours. manually, but I'm not here p to play a campaign. Staunch ally, implacable enemy. Law. Of an ancient land. Now, skill-wise, I'm going to go for treasures after battle. Uh, the reason... The reason I went for him is he actually has some useful traits. He gets the generous host. Like, there's some traits you really, really want. In terms of combat effectiveness, but in terms of campaign effectiveness, which is my focus, you really want this growth, you want the happiness, and you want the further happiness and growth in Wild Garrison. Lysia's king. 
I won't give ground. I know I can expect fine and true. Sarpadon of Lycia. Now you may have guessed it, but this was a, this whole thing was a trap. I keep my promises. There's no reason to ignore. So I'm going to give them the settlement. And then declare war on them. See, the AI does have this tendency of, you know, colonizing things. But the way colonization works in this game is that it is based... Now, it wouldn't work in other areas of the map, to be clear. This kind of little trickery. But it does work here because there's only one faction. Strike them down! I claim it for Lycia. And next turn, what do you think Storage I'm going to do? No, well, next turn, I'm going to get the farm that gives me the growth. Let's and I am more. going to move him here to recruit even more units. I can do that. In this case, skirmishers. I won't give ground. And go to Troy it and get the defensive speak. alliance and get a good barter agreement for a thousand food per turn in exchange for well, I don't know, stone and a hundred wood let's go with that and also because i do have gold It is a pretty comprehensive agreement, suffice to say. Well, roads got wiped out, but that is fine. And now I can start spreading my influence. This is important. And you get ancillaries as well. What well, ancillary? Well, this one gives me influence in the province I am in, which is always useful to have. So let's put it on him for a moment. Eventually, I will put it on him for the extra, uh, for the extra motivation. Now, this can give me. Increases the delay when rage. This gives me melee defense. Let's go with the rage benefit. And over here, we want to take over the settlement. I wouldn't prioritize it so much. If not for a fact that I know some other faction I've consulted the would potentially the come over here to um, to pick it up. Now, when you're dealing with this kind of situation, I am happy. Troy always has a significant amount of resources. So we're just going to trade... A good dose of our gold for a thousand uh, wood. And then build that up. This army is a rogue army, it's tied to the myth units. I'll see off all comers of immortal heritage. Now if I play my cards right, I can actually attack their capital because there isn't just enough movement points. Okay, he should have enough movement points regardless. And I can benefit from that extra replenishment. Then just sweep up from the south 
take all of this. And then abandon Telos, maybe. Though it depends on where their army is. Alright, so... This is a pretty substantial force, all things considered, so I'm going to bring both my armies. For him, I get an ability between Fatigue Reduction and a Range Benefit. I'm going to go for Fatigue Reduction and going to disband this army. Make them pay! Now, because it's counted as a Valiant Defeat, I expect that they will sally out. Don't go for a Siege, it generally ends up being a mess. Now, over here, because I am worshipping Aphrodite... Speaking about worship, let's keep her happy. You need to keep the god. The gods are fickle. They require constant love and attention. What would they be without the mortals' attention? We will break bread and then talk. Now, does he have wood? No. Actually, he does, so... Let's go for something like this. We're gonna go for five. Thirty, let's say. Okay. As long as I don't run out of um, resources, that is good enough for me. King Sarpedon is all. And now I've cornered them over here. Now, you don't necessarily want to ally the major factions too quickly because it might bite you in the ass. Do not falter. Okay. Engage the foe. Off we go. Head out. All right, let's get that food production up. With Athena's blessing, we can take them. Strike them down. Now, Cannot he is stuck it. in Force March, and th these are a bunch of young spears. The but the thing about it, it's not even a question of siege equipment. Even if I literally assaulted the walls, like there's just too many things over here that could go wrong. Show your metal. Um, tell you what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give Sarpedon all of the really good units. Take the centaurs. Over there. On the march. Born for war. Secure the perimeter. Force march right here and get some reinforcements. If he can get reinforcements, like I don't need to assault the walls right now. I have not I am open. And these guys are King going to give me everything words. I need. <laughs> okay, let's say that was too much. Sell too much. I what I need is bronze. They have a decent amount. I am we have an agreement with them. What's on offer. Okay.
That'll do. And I could use this uh, further for the benefits it provides. This army should, in theory, be the shit out of this on a field bell. I'm not concerned about the field bell. I am concerned, of course, about what would happen if I decide to storm the gate, so to speak. So I deliberately allowed them, or weakened myself, sufficiently weakened myself, quote-unquote, for them to think that they could win. They Alright. So feel bell. Now, these guys also have a lovely precursor weapon, which we are going to use. These fellows are going to be on the back, range units behind, chariots behind, because they are not melee chariots, they're archer chariots, they're skirmisher the cav, if you will. And the battle is going to lag quite a bit, because, well, there's quite a few units. Now, these guys are not necessarily too fast, but but that's fine. Believe it or not, fast speed is not important. I mean, holy hell, these guys are slower than Nurglings. <laughs> well, Nurgle's trash. But it's not important. The reason it's not important the foe has sighted your hidden units. Alright, we're getting engaged. Harpies, harpies. harpies are going down there. He's invoking Zeus. And we're gonna get the chariots to do some flanking attacks. Those harpies did achieve one for the no Alright. So this per uh, this flank right here is going to be under a significant amount of pressure. And now the flying units are coming in. Now, harpies are glass cannons to the extreme. Though they might Sarah, actually be. Your warriors are losing heart. Into battle! No one will remember you. warrior. Alright. He's used Zeus twice on that particular flank to try and break it. It is the most vulnerable portion of my entire line. Your warriors have been routed. Troy forever! Off to glory. Chariot warriors! As long as the line holds in some form. Your hero is under attack. Trained for war! Now, they are in guard mode, so they're not... Alright, let's charge those young spears. And then pull the Lycian wing chariots out. Your warriors are rallying. Sarpedon! Son of Zeus! 
Alright, Sarpedon, who by the way is a sign of Zeus. They might die charging those uh, archers, but it may be well worth it. Let's turn off guard mode. And Aristea, you build up towards Aristea. State your orders, honor and duty. And then you use it. Solid ally. Right, thirty seconds. You use you build up using army abilities. Battle hard. Troy forever. Kill them all. They just refuse to fight. Sarpedon. Understood. Strike true. Access. Withdraw. Move out! We suck! Show no fear! Patron! Kill them all! Armed and ready! Fall upon them! Chariots! Kill them all! Now the problem with slow units is that you can be kited to death. If you're not careful. Well, Icia has fast movers, so it's no problem. I think an ideal Lycian army would probably be made up of a bunch of this heavy infantry and then combined with chariots just to screw over the enemy. Okay. Let's go get their archer lord. Troy forever on the march. Honor and duty. Advance. Alright, he's activated his Aristea. But he is an archer lord, so he's not really gonna play the same decisive role. Sacred warrior. Chariot warriors, chariots on the move. They will pay. Slings prepared. Access. Bring their death. The son of Zeus will end you. Divine the inspiration. Is now, while the Aristea is active, Aristea gives you a significant they number of benefits. Pay. Crucially, gives you the HP regeneration. So it can be tricky killing the enemy Access. lord in a fight. Leave none alive. Stand ready. Strike true. Access. I expect Sarpedon will be fine, but a bit touch and go probably. Especially as he is surrounded now. Charioteers, leave none alive. Chariots, cut them down, slaughter them, off to glory. Axes, they will pay. Armed and ready. There we go.
Victory is close enough to taste. Right, let's try and capture as many of them as we can. Maybe he'll get them. Hades has claimed the enemy hero. All right, both enemy heroes have been destroyed. I cannot oblige. Well, that isn't necessarily going to end too well for me. Destroy the foe. All right, one more turn. And a rebellion will spark too as well. My now I'm gonna get stone. Your path to victory. Hit the road. Take them out! Kill the lot! We're taking over. Alright, so while Sarpedon is busily from. doing that, we will just claim these Do other settlements with other secondary army. I obviously could send the main army to help out over there, but I'm not interested in that. Administration. This is a administration efficiency is basically research rate for this game. They just decided to change the name of it for reasons. You can rely on me. Okay, so now they're gonna start taking attrition. And I'm still gaining resources, even if it is at a slower pace than I would necessarily like. I do have a lot of population surplus points there, though. Ally grant. Maybe I need. I should go with this. Yeah, let's go with that. Get the truckload of stone. I can always destroy it later on. Now, as you play the game, you will start unlocking your epic storyline, which is what you need to do in order to win the campaign. If we look... where do I need to look? We shall prevail! So I need 50 white granite 50 iron 50 mino and relics and i need to eliminate sparta mycenae and nasus and also do 10 stages of the homeric uh story okay so now the first one is i am going to trade a bit of food to try to just speak gift it and this gives me 20 percent food stone and 10 percent wood which is a fairly solid benefit, actually, all things considered. 
and also gives me experience. Now I want to get this influence after victory because I want to build influence in this particular province. Not interested in any deal that they I might have to offer me. Make them pay. Show your metal. I'll do it right. Massacre them. Okay. Bring the pay. Occupy this occupied. place. I'll see off all comers. Drive them back. That's a lot of harpies, but I'm going to eliminate both those structures next turn. Once I finish recruiting the harpies, that is. I need wood, so I am just gonna go to whoever has a lot of wood. Troy, of course, has freaking... Frick, and one of the curiosities is like any faction, though Troy especially, will give you resources for free during the course of the campaign. That is something important to remember. Because, okay. The words of Lysia's king are always welcome. All right, so get that barter agreement back up. Now, I don't really care about getting the settlement to a higher tier. The reason I don't is because, one, it's really expensive. Two, you're not really gaining that many benefits. I mean, obviously getting it to tier 5 is important, but not as a priority. I'm gonna get an Anatolian youth over here and... Well, thankfully, we do start with the ability of producing gold because we are using a lot of gold during this campaign. There is a gold mine close enough. I could have chosen to go for that, but securing all of this will ultimately pay off. We can take the. I won't. That's uh, why I've chosen to do it. Prove your worth. I'll prove myself. Do not falter. Yeah. Destroy the foes. If it's one heavy axe warrior. This place is ours. Sarpadon, not Lysia. Your path to victory. Set up watches. For my duty. I will do so. Loyal. And true. We've got a long hike. Steadfast. If only Troy had more allies like noble. All right, so the Trojan War has begun. Now, it, I could take a, get a lot of advantages from this, or let's go to Troy to negotiate. and join the war against uh, these fellows, because Troy will give us a truckload of stuff. I 
I that we need. And here I'm going to get agents. I could have done it over here in the main settlement, but I decided to prioritize. You know what? I decided to prioritize the other things that didn't matter. Let's get more of my no and relics. Divine King. They won't get through. By the numbers. Keep together, head out, move it, ready to march, we will win through. And over here I'm going to take advantage of... I won't give ground situation and just build up forces to tackle these rogue armies a rebellion will soon spark but i could take over the settlement and start building up but that would be a significant amount of resources that i just don't have i could um the priest shall wield just pray to aphrodite and that should delay the rebellion because by praying to her, I gain, um, okay, so I gain four happiness over there. I'll and a lot of growth right. as well. This is the reason Aphrodite is the best. Let's keep asking for resources. There is much to discuss. And right now, I am happy to negotiate. I am in a prime position to just conquer a lot of territory. Just need to build I up the forces for it. I've heard King Sarpedon has some odd All right, ideas. I don't care about that. Let's see about the Egyptians, though. It can be discussed, perhaps. He'd will be willing to give me a lot, and a lot of it does count. Now he, the way he uh, views resources and uh, barters is different because he can't generate so those resources. So. Well, he is generating a bit of resources, but not really enough to sustain his economy, obviously. And now I go deal with these rogue armies. They give you special units, like this is Mephos only. They give you like one griffin, one lesser griffin. <laughs> Look at Ardania kicking ass. Well, that's what I would do is if I was playing Aeneas. Though he lost the most important thing. All right, and now we can begin mythic expeditions. We can take them. But of course. Your path to victory. Mm. 
Make me proud. Let's free them. Ah, please. March without rest. Then we move him over here. And we're going to go deal with the next army. This gives me a griffin. And I have two stacks of troops at this point. Almost. With Athena's blessing, they won't get through. But I do need more food. I am Which only Troy has. I have nothing but respect. Come. There is much to... I will always heed such a trusted comrade. All right. I need as much as you can give me. Now, I don't want to launch a mythic expedition too quickly, because otherwise I will regret, end up regretting it. Because mythic expeditions, okay, you can go for the Griffin Patriarch, the Hydra, Cerberus. Uh, Cerberus is probably the best in a lot of ways. Um, Like, you can get these guys, which are not really that great. Then you look at Cerberus. Let's see the Hydra, actually. All right, so you get these very weak Hydra Priests, which are magicians. Or you can go for the units of Elysium. Oof. I can give you a lot of gold. Quality unit capacity. Or this one. Now, what is important to understand here is there's faction benefits. Like, I think that Griffin is tailored towards gold, if you want a lot of that. <laughs> Which, obviously, you want. Now, Sarpathon has a skill that's very, very useful, and that's the Y skill. This can give you influence, food, and then you get the choice between stone and wood. As you might imagine, that is pretty damn powerful. And you can get that on regular heroes as well. Do you need more wood? It would please me to speak with you. to build up over here. The best warrior won. Sarpedon of Lycia. Keeps reminding me I need that. But I don't want to spend it. That's because the second quest, uh, this is the thing, like this is the kind of game where you really need to know what the fuck you're doing way in advance to plan things. Uh, over here, for instance, the, one of the things that I know is that the White Granite will come in the second mission. So I obviously want to save up for that. Okay, so as I said, and this will give me influence and happiness faction-wide. Everything is going to be all right. So let's distribute the white granite.
and then we strike. Lord of an ancient land. 100 wood versus 60 stone. Let's go for a wood. Agreed. And now I'm at war with two different factions. Maybe I could get roads. Make them pay. We shall prevail. We will win through. Engage the foe. Strike them down. That's a bit. Yes. I claim it for Lycia. Ever faithful. But fine. I'll do it right. I always knew we'd win. I've got what it takes. Staunch ally. Implacable enemy. And over here, I'm going to ensure the units are always fresh when they do enter a battle. Now we need to go over here and tackle all of this. There is an army awaiting me in that settlement. And I need more wood. Wood is always going to be, if I'm being honest, the biggest freaking headache in the campaign I am open by far King is always words. damned wood. No joke. I expect a profitable meeting. If I take that agreement, and it's not like this is a good time. I've consult. Come, friend. What words do you have for me? He doesn't have a lot if of resources. Troy had more allies like Noble Lycia. Now, one of the things I can do as Sarpedon is I can go to various factions and basically take their trade agreements. So if they're incredibly favorable, which they might be, because if they're, you know, buddy buddy, then Stop. yeah, it's obviously You are welcome. They're gonna be my... worth it. There is a gold mine there. But I may not yeah, okay. I am interested in hearing what's on offer. So that means for the next 20 turns I can't attack them without suffering significant diplomatic penalties, but that's fine. My word is binding. Let's go for that. Son of Zeus himself. Battle call. And two full stacks assemble. As for that army, I'm just not gonna bother right now or I might with a secondary army that I might take significant casualties in process like these armies I keep my promises recruit a mythical unit let battle commence Everything they have is ours. A true ally. I'm going to keep that barracks in. Let's make war. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Spears. In good order. Head off. 
And so this battle is going to be a cakewalk in a lot of ways. Should be able to shoot. What I yep. Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. All right, send them in. Breaking apart very, very quickly, you hear. Victory is close enough to taste. The Roma! His fighting! Ready for incoming! No one's going to be caught! Words of cheat. Chase him down. No survivors. One of your units has no more ammunition. Oh, that was the worst ability to use there. And that gives you a Hydra Priest. We're on the move. Your path to victory. By the numbers. And this is the thing about Troy. Like, once you get going, you get going. It does take a while to do so. But yeah, once you steamroll, you steamroll. And it's not just a question of Sarpedon either. I am happy to negotiate. Not really. Oof. 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 Yeah, that was... That is going to be painful. I am happy <laughs> to negotiate. Okay, I can afford like 150. And then I can go again and make another agreement. I am happy to negotiate. Or wait one turn until I get the wood. And then yeah, trade some of the wood for for that. So this army, it can only run away so far. And the thing about the AI is, once it has an army in its element, like that army with one unit, it won't send another one. 
unless they move it out first, which they did here. We can support the Trojans, yay! And now we can attack. And true. Okay, at this point we need the food. Some wine and figs first. Then we shall talk. I think I'll take the bronze, thank you very much. May your visit fulfill both. I've consulted the... Sarpedon, my ally and my friend. What can I do for you? That will be enough to keep me going. Looks like a win. It can be discussed. King Sarpedon is welcome to Now, Legion Minoa is pretty small of potatoes, right? But they do have that gold mine. You are welcome here, King Sarpedon. I do need fifty of each. Law of an ancient land. We will break bread and then talk. All right, that's fine. I don't need that agreement right now, anyway. Alright, this is on the verge of, like, rebellion, but it's not quite rebelling. I'm ready to talk. And that will give me the Hydra Priest. He's got a bit of an AoE spell. Then we get that hero. Fit to fight. On the march. This will cost some units, but strike them down. I claim Worth it, it for Lycia. Mm. 
Making my mark. And right now, with all the provinces I have, is an easy enough matter to just keep expanding, get the agents, you know, get more wood, sort the wood out situation, which won't be too big of a hassle. Deal with Halicarnassus, maybe. I can't. Sarpedon. Now, I could have declared war on this faction right here, but I would have had to march for all of this territory on my own. I could have claimed gold mine earlier though, and that would have obviously helped me out. There are multiple paths, but now at this point, I can Not sure march I over here in this territory, deal with Halicarnassus, or at least deal with their wood at the, uh, over and here. That's how it's done. Get more units. Throw everything we got against Alicarnassus, wipe them out, and then march over here in Caria. Or, you know, just go over here. I am but we do have an agreement with Caria, but they are at war with Phyllis. This should be a good discussion. But I can start building up towards Confederation with them. Or I could just cancel the agreement, but I can get Halicarnas to sell it to them, get Kos, get this territory, and seize it for myself. And get these islands, and eventually... Uh, and eventually take over this territory, the gold mine over there. Which would be worth it. Cosine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and uh, enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.